In this dilution tutorial, we'll start out by going, few, going through a few basic math equations that you'll often use when you're solving dilution problems. One is the simple ratio that you had in secondary high school math classes. So if um, 15 is to 50, as x is to 250, you can solve for x by um, simply multiplying both sides by 250 so that you can isolate x. And on the left-hand side, um, 50 and 250 can simplify to 5 so that you end up with x is equal to 15 times 5 or 75. So that's a very fast, easy way to find a missing value. Let's look at another formula that you learned about in chemistry class for dilutions. And that form formula is C1V1 equals C2V2, where C is concentration and V is volume. Now, here's a sample question. What volume, that's our unknown, of a 10 millimolar solution is required to make 20 mils of a 50 micromolar solution? The first thing that we want to do is make sure that the units match. So we've got 10 millimolar and 50 micromolar. We're going to convert the 50 micromolar to millimolar. 50 micromolars, 50 micromolar is the same as saying 0.05 millimolar. So that's the value that we're going to use when we set up the formula. Now we can plug the numbers into the formula. V1 times 10 millimolar is going to be equal to 20 mils times 0.05 millimolar. Next, we're going to divide both sides by 10 millimolar. And that will allow us to cancel on this side, and we'll be able to simplify the right-hand side of the equation. V1 will then equal we can simplify the 10 and the 20 to 2 mils times, we can get rid of the millimolar units, 0.05 is equal to 0 0.1 mil, or 100 microliters. We'll often see solutions labeled as 2x, 5x, 10x, 50x. These are concentrated solutions, um, also called stock solutions. Now the number, in this case, let's use the example 5x, indicates how concentrated it is. It's five times more concentrated than you want the final concentration. The final concentration is going to be 1x. So how do you figure out how to dilute that? Well, how to go from 5x to 1x, we're going to think about what you would divide this by to get 1. So 5 divided by 5 is going to equal 1. So another way of looking at that is to say 5x times, actually you can use this, like 5x times 1 over 5 is equal to 1. This number, the 1 fifth, then becomes your dilution. And a 1 to 5 dilution means one part concentrated solution, that would be our um, 5x solution, in a total volume of 5. So if we've got 1 over 5, that we need to dilute, and let's say that we've got one mil, we need to figure out what we're going to dissolve it in, and that turns out to be four parts because our total volume is going to be one plus something, and it's going to be five, and obviously the number that we need to fill in there is four. So our, a one to five dilution is, for example, one mil in four mils, of our diluent plus one mil, and that came from our concentrated stock up here. 
And the same is true if you're looking at um, other kinds of dilutions. A 1 to 10 dilution means that you've got one part of concentrated stock plus nine parts of diluent to give 10 parts total. Let's look at an example. So in this case, we're looking at a 10x stock and we want to make a 1x stock. So right now we know that we're going to do a 1 to 10 dilution. We can use C1, V1 equals C2, V2 and plug in the numbers as follows. 10x times V1 equals 1x um, times 200 mils. So we can solve for that V1 is equal to 20 mils. Now to complete the answer, that 20 mils goes up here, 20 mils of our TAE stock, and we're going to go to a total of 200, so we need 180 mils of water. Let's look at another dilution problem. You have one mil of a measles vaccine that you need to dilute in saline, and you need to calculate how much saline you need. So we just look at the 1 to 5 dilution. 1 to 5 can be written as 1 over 5. And we know that this is 5 is the total volume, so it's 1 over 4 plus 1. And 4 came from the difference between 5 and the volume 1 that we put in. So 4 is the answer to the question, 4 mils is how much saline you need. Let's see how that works if you now have two mils of vaccine and use the same dilution, one to five. We can set up the formula. We know it's a one to five dilution. That's gonna equal two mils, our vaccine volume, and X plus two mils. So we're gonna solve for X. The first thing I wanna do is multiply both sides by X plus two mils because that gets X into the numerator. So that gives me this equation, x plus 2 mils over 5 is equal to 2 mils. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 so that I can get 5 out of the um, denominator here. So times 5 over here. So that gets me to x plus 2 mils is equal to 10 mils. So x is going to be equal to 10 mils minus 2 mils, and that's equal to 8 mils. And I'm going to go back and check that. So let's go up here again. I have 2 mils plus, now I know that x is 8. 8 mils plus 2 mils is equal to 2 mils divided by 10, and that is equal to, when I reduce that, is a 1 to 5. So my dilution is correct. Let's look at an example of serial dilutions and, and some back extrapolation. We do have another tutorial just on serial dilutions that is a little bit more in-depth, but we can look at it here. So you have a yeast culture. I want to focus on that, and you're asked to determine the concentration of cells in that culture. Now we're going to make serial dilutions and plate 100 microliter aliquot, so keep that in mind. So let's look first at the serial dilutions. So here are your serial dilutions. They're 1 to 10 dilutions, and you're going to plate 100 microliter from each dilution. Then you let these cultures grow for one or two days, and you count the number of colonies that grew on each plate. The 10 to the minus 7 dilution yielded 95 colonies. So which plate is that? Well, this is 10 to the minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7. Because we're going down tenfold 
in in values 10 100 1000 etc and we're diluting so we give it a minus number because it's actually 1 in 10 to the 7 here and because it's in the denominator we call it a 10 to the minus 7 dilution and this is the plate that gives you 95 colonies So if you had 95 colonies in 100 microliters, you would have 950 colonies in one mil. And that's what we're looking for ultimately. But we're still at 10 to the minus 7. Now if you want to do this um, in kind of the easy way to look at it, this means that there were 9,500 in the next highest dilution, 10 to the minus 6, 95,000, 950,000, etc., until you get up to your, excuse me, your um, 10 to the minus 1 dilution out here. Which has, let's see, 950 million, it looks like. This means that you had um, 9.5 billion cells in the undilute culture, but a faster way to get to that would be to go back to your original estimate, 950 colonies. You could go back to your original 950 in 10 to the minus 7 and use that value to say we've got 950 times 10 to the 7 because that's your dilution factor and that translates into exactly the same number which is 9.5 times 10 to the 9 yeast cells per mil. Here's another practical application of dilutions and determining concentration. So these are spot plates showing the growth of yeast from various dilutions. We had 10 microliter spots, and this is the growth that occurred after several days. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count the colonies that arose from single cells. And this is the best region to count because the colonies are clearly um, visible and very isolated from one another. So let's count. I count 1, 7, and 8, and I have 0 from the, um, the second row. And we're going to take the average. So that means that we had 16 total, and we had 4 samples, 4 rows. So we have 4 colonies average in 10 microliters of a 1 to 1,000 dilution. Four colonies translates to four cells that gave rise to those colonies. Now we have it in 10 microliters, so the first thing that we want to do is go with the convention. We typically report cells per mil, so instead of four uh, cells in 10 microliters. We're going to convert that 4 cells per 10 microliters to 400 cells per mil. And we do that because 10 microliters is equal to 0.01 mil. And we can multiply 0.01 mil by 100 to get to 1 mil. That means that we have to multiply this by 100 to get us up to. Um, uh, 400 cells per mil. Now that we've averaged the colonies, averaged the cells, and we've accounted for the fact that we only spotted 10 microliters and converted that to mils, now we can take into account the dilution factor. And the dilution that we were using to count colonies and convert that to cells is 1,000, or 10 to the 3, 
So our original culture then would have contained 400 times 10 to the 3, or 4 times 10 to the 5, if we simplify that. And that would be yeast cells per mill.